Hello, Sago, Scano, everyone. It's Thursday, and we are on our path headed towards the long weekend. I'm Lori Davis-Hill, Director of Six Nations Health Services, and this is your COVID-19 podcast update for May 14th. Yesterday, we talked with Larry Longboat about the new chat and text features available for the crisis response hotline. But today, let's turn our attention to another emergency service and the highly skilled people who are responding. I'm talking about our own Six Nations Paramedic Services and 911. It's my pleasure at this time to introduce a member of our paramedic services. So let's welcome Drew Can- Crandall. He's going to talk to us about 911 during this pandemic and what to expect if you find yourself having to call. Hi, Drew. Hello. Can you tell us about your training and how long you have been a paramedic at Six Nations? Absolutely. Um, I started my career here with Six Nations Paramedic Service about nine years ago. Um, to become a paramedic, um, you attend. Uh, a college program for about two years um, and then you go through an extensive consolidation program uh, with the service to learn the job after that you uh, write a ministry exam that's about six hours in length um, and then once graduated uh, you're certified by the base hospital you can start working uh, you'll be working as a primary care paramedic uh, after a few years of working uh, you can apply to college program to become an advanced care paramedic, which I am. That is an additional year of training and provides you with more advanced uh, skills to better serve the community. Well, we're certainly lucky to have you here at Six Nations. Uh, What would you like to share with us today? Well, first things first, I'd like to thank the public for taking the pandemic seriously by following physical distance measures and good hygiene practices. We are truly in this together. Um, Today, I want to discuss the uh, paramedic services response to the pandemic. We are continuing to respond to calls um, during the pandemic, and we have taken steps to ensure the safety of paramedics in the community by completing daily screening practices, uh, practicing social distancing, and increasing our cleaning and disinfecting protocols. We approach every patient contact with full PPE, which is above and beyond the minimum requirements from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Six Nations Paramedic Services has also been an integral part of the COVID-19 testing. The Paramedic Service, in conjunction with Public Health, are providing mobile nasal swab testing for children and individuals who can't make it to the COVID-19 Assessment Centre. Since the start of the pandemic, we have noticed a slight reduction in call volume, which uh, presents interesting data. We can contribute this reduction in calls to several factors. But what really concerns us is that people may be afraid or hesitant to call or be transported to the hospital for fear of being infected with COVID-19. We want the public to know that it is still safe to call 911 and go to the hospital. Medical emergencies such as strokes and heart attacks are still occurring. Hospitals have seen a reduction in these types of patients, which suggests that people are suffering at home through these emergencies. So we just want to inform the public, we're here if you need us. What do we should people expect when they call 911? Well, if you do have an emergency and you have to call 911, uh, you'll first be linked with an uh, ambulance dispatch or call taker. They'll be asking more questions now than before the pandemic. This is to identify if a patient screens positive for COVID-19. This information is then relayed to the responding paramedics. Now we ask that you have patients with them. We also ask that you have patients with the paramedics. When they arrive, they'll be donning their personal protective equipment, which may take an additional minute or two. It's an important part of provider safety and ensures that we are all healthy and available to respond to your emergencies throughout the pandemic. During the assessment of the patient, paramedics will again screen the patient with a set of screening questions. If the patient is being transported to the hospital, we want to inform everybody that there's no visitors at the hospital except uh, in Uh, extenuating circumstances like uh, the child under the age of 12. Well, it sounds like you're well prepared to uh, still take care of our community at all times. Um, Do you have any other news you'd like to share? Yes, actually, we got some exciting news. Um, Six Nations Paramedic Services has uh, received their new ambulance. Um, Look for it in the community, Ambulance 2084. Don't be afraid to give us a wave. One thing that you'll notice different about this ambulance is we have our new decal design on the outside of the ambulance. We've moved to a purple color in line with the community. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, taking a look at it. 
I think it's a, a very cool look. The rest uh, of our ambulances will be updated in the coming months to reflect the same design. We also, <laughs> yes, it is. we also have uh, procured some new training equipment that has made it easier for paramedics to stay on top of their game when it comes to providing quality patient care. This training equipment has been available for use with health services and has been used in the training of COVID-19 testers at the assessment center. That is really good to hear. I believe that was uh, in part funded by donations from the Six Nations Health Foundation. So we do appreciate uh, that as well. Yes, it's uh, fantastic. Anything else you'd like to add before you leave us, Drew? Um, I just want to thank everyone for doing their part to flatten the curve and slow the spread. Um, don't hesitate to call us if, uh, if you need us and stay safe. Well, Drew, thanks for stopping in and providing us with this great information. Uh, 911 continues to be an important tool for us during this time, and I'm glad to hear that you are very, so very well prepared um, in keeping yourselves safe and our, and, our, and our community safe. And Yawa, to you and all of our paramedics for saving lives and, and taking care of us. So here's a look at today's numbers from our, from our and our neighboring communities. Right now in Six Nations, we remain at 11 positive cases. Ten of those cases have resolved with one death. We currently have no active cases. To date, Six Nations has completed 522 tests and have received 443 negative results. We have 39 people currently in self-isolation as directed by Oshwigan Public Health. Please continue to identify symptoms and get testing to help us monitor the impact of this virus on Six Nations. In surrounding communities, New Credit reports one positive case. Haldeman Norfolk Public Health Unit reports 203 positive cases, 77 resolved, and 30 deaths. Grant Public Health Unit reports 102 positive cases, 90 resolved, and 3 deaths. Hamilton Public Health Unit reports 500 cases, 366 of those have resolved, and 25 deaths. And Toronto Public Health Unit uh, reporting 7,944 positive cases, 5,655 have resolved, and 634 deaths. In Ontario, the total positive cases are 21,236, 15,845 of those cases have resolved, and a total of 1,765 deaths. The province is set to announce the opening of more low-risk businesses uh, today, one being golf courses along with more retail. If you find yourself venturing out onto the golf course as the long weekend approaches, and I know there are some that will, remember to stay the physical distancing six feet apart from your fellow golfers. Do not share golf clubs or other equipment, and remember to sanitize your hands and golf clubs afterwards. Let's stay COVID clear. However, if you or any one of your family are experiencing one of the COVID-19 symptoms or any other new or unusual symptom, please call the Six Nations COVID-19 Assessment Centre at 226-446-9909 or toll free at 1-855-977-7737. The COVID-19 hotline is open seven days a week and can arrange assessment for you. We are now closing in on the long weekend, but we are back tomorrow. Uh, and before I say Ona, I'd like to have a few announcements. So tonight there will be a DJ set with Tim Toolman Hill on Instagram Live with Synonym Art Consultation at 9 p.m. He has organized a tip jar with the benefits going to the Six Nations Emergency Food Program. You can tune in online, enjoy some great music entertainment, and donate to support our community. Also, a Six Nations COVID relief fund has been announced, which will be used to purchase much-needed personal protective equipment, medical supplies, including equipment to maintain essential pandemic operations, as well as food and necessities for many community members who are facing financial challenges. The fund is being administered by the Royal Bank of Canada, and contributions can be made through electronic funds transfer, or EFT, and electronic banking email at covidrelief at sixnations.ca. That's covidrelief at S-I-X-N-A-T-I-O-N-S dot C-A. Next, Public Works has put out a call for homemade masks, so any and all donations are greatly appreciated, and you can call 519-445-4242 for more information. And as we've mentioned this week, if you would like to connect with the Six Nations Mobile Crisis Services, you can do so by phone at 866-445-2204 or 519-445-2204. This is available 24-7. By text, you can contact Monday to Friday, 
877-9480 between 8.30 and 4. Or we're live chat Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4 p.m. And you can find that on the Six Nations COVID-19.ca website. And so before we close, I want to remind you to keep the good mind. We will get through COVID-19. And more importantly, keep the good mind, and especially for our frontline workers, including our paramedics. Please stay home for them. Please stay home for all of us. Stay well and stay safe. Nyawan.